I attempted to build the strangest airplane design, an asymmetric single stage to orbit where our mission would be to travel to the Mars-like planet Doom. And to spice things up, there's a secret hidden inside our plane that will be revealed later, once I successfully land on the planet's surface. Building an asymmetric SSTO is a challenge that has never been done before in real life. This is inspired by the Bohm and Voss BV-141, a strange but super cool looking asymmetric tactical reconnaissance airplane that was built during World War II. So the question is, how do I build one? Well, utilizing advanced mathematics and my totally big brain, I decided to use a two-body design with large wings on both sides and smaller wings on the front. I added a bunch of stabilizers and most importantly made sure to place the center of mass slightly in front of the center of lift. Though it was very difficult to align the two as this involved fine tuning both sides of the plane, utilizing the fuel tanks and wing sizes. This will help keep the plane stable during flight, or at least that's what we hope for. The build very quickly took shape, and it was important to keep a functional design but also make it look really cool and of course, super strange. After many hours of building, our design was ready for testing. Our first launch attempt. <clears throat> uh, looks like I need to add some duct tape. Second launch. Uh, again. Third launch. Fourth launch, uh, unfortunately I had to grapple with the game's bugs, which never end apparently, so though eventually I finally achieved flight, though it was going in the wrong direction, and maintaining control was terrible. So to combat all the strange happenings in the game, I made a number of iterations throughout a period of many many days, and I finally re achieved the perfect-ish strange but cool looking design. So I commenced our journey. Either I would crash and burn, which was very likely, uh, or I would get to space and go all the way to Duna in one piece. Unfortunately, we are limited in game due to the fact that aerodynamics isn't very accurate. For example, the Bloem and Voss BV-141 was designed to combat issues that would be faced with typical single propeller airplanes, where they would veer to one side due to the torque generated. In our case, our main concern was that a large portion of fuel was going to be used to get us the planets out of the planet's atmosphere and into space. This would cause the center of mass to shift far from the center of lift, thereby causing imbalance and potential loss of control. Although I think we're going to have a loss of control either way, so <laughs> this is just going to make it even worse. After a grueling journey fighting against all these challenges, I somehow successfully reached orbit. Which, by the way, is quite an achievement in itself. I haven't seen too many people do this. Then I set off to Juno. This trip wasn't difficult at all and relatively smooth. In fact, it felt a little too easy. I don't know, foreshadowing something bad to come. So, once I approached Duna's atmosphere, I was very concerned. As you see, our trip to Duna burnt a lot more fuel, and thus I was certain that the ship's stability was going to be much worse. So, especially once I entered Duna's atmosphere. At first, it appeared that I would have a stable approach, and it looked to be relatively steady, until I hit the thicker part of Duna's atmosphere at which point SAS and RCS controls became absolutely useless and I spun out of control. But hey, we all like amusement park rides, so our passengers counter this as just another J on the job. Our landing strategy was simple. Let gravity do its thing, let us spin like crazy, and then we would deploy our parachutes. After that, we would fire up our engines and hopefully slow our descent, assuming we can control it. It took a few attempts and maybe a couple crashes here and there. Um, but yeah, unfortunately uh, there was a bit of a design failure here where the parachutes were a little bit small. In fact, they're what I would call micro parachutes. Or you could say that our ship was so big that these parachutes became small. Mm. They're useless, anyway. Eventually I landed. Uh, 
sort of. On our fifth attempt, we became a turtle. And it was impossible to flip the space plan, much like a turtle. So I had to revert the save and made another attempt. And I must say, this is probably one of my coolest landings yet. I mean, it's always a real cool achievement being able to land or at least get close to the ground. And, uh, uh, no, oh no, will the ship get damaged? Will it be okay? No? Yes? Safe. <laughs> we did it. Okay. That worked out so well. All right, let's turn the brakes on. And we finally made it onto the Duna's surface. All right, this is cool. Now for the moment we've all been waiting for, the big reveal. Our space plane wasn't just carrying us, it was also carrying a six-seater Kerbal Party Rover. <laughs> That's what I called it. Not very original. Um, well, anyway, the colors of the asymmetric space plane were originally put to a vote and everyone wanted black and silver, hence the colors, although we, you know, naturally we've got a bit of gold in there and it's uh, inevitable. But the second best vote was neon. However, I didn't want to leave the neon voters out, hence the colors of this rover, though this is the best I could do to match neon colors. With our rover deployed, it was time for a joyride. Now, I actually tested this once on Kerbin and it worked pretty well, but hmm, this, this is not acting the way it was on Kerbin. This is, this is very strange. Uh, for some reason, it's stuck in this weird position and I'm not sure why. Uh, I, I've checked this, the wheel settings. I've, I've, I don't know. I've turned off SAS, um, RCS controls. Uh, I don't know. Anyway, when I went to docking mode and did a few flips here and there, it seemed to kind of stay on on the floor so very strange but hey this is a, a feature so if you want to try this out yourself great anyway so look the final objective for this video you see that little mountain over there yeah we're gonna scale the mountain at full speed with this rover all right here we go engine on and we're airborne oh yeah our passengers are super happy <laughs> look at them all right, we want a safe landing, of course. We can't make them disappear into nothing. Parachutes deployed. And... Landed. Okay, yeah, that worked out pretty well. You know what? Let's do that one more time. Here I go. And in the air. Oh, oh no. Uh, <clears throat> in true couple fashion, I forgot to repair the parachutes. So... Yeah. All right, well, anyway, let's revert the save. And, ah, ah, okay, we're falling through the planet now. <laughs> this is nice. That was totally part of this feature. Uh, let's check the asymmetric plane. Ah, okay, it's uh, levitating. Hmm, all right, I think KSP2 has some hidden features. Uh, all right, that's, yeah, well, I, I guess that's the end of this adventure. <laughs> <laughs> that's uh, that's an exciting end. Anyway, let me know your thoughts around our strange looking design and check out this other video where against all odds and bugs, a, a lot of bugs, I embraced my inner masochism and made this massive space station. It was absolutely insane. Weeks worth of effort, but it turned out amazing. So overall, I hope you enjoyed and thanks for watching. See you next time.